Our second scene is at the ball, where Berlioz finds himself amidst swirling dancers, incredibly beautiful waltz music. A French waltz, I'm not quite sure, but Berlioz does it really, really well. Um, and of course, he sees his beloved in the midst of the dancers. This being unrequited love, she doesn't see him, she has nothing to do with him, and he sees her from across the room. And so we have this idée fixe, this fixed idea, the melody that we heard in the first movement, but now kind of in a waltz form. So in the middle of this, of all the swirling waltzers, all of a sudden things kind of quiet down just a little bit, and he sees her across the room. We have that same yearning goes up even higher and crescendos gets more intense all the way up so just a little bit of interruption in the scene and then the, the scene continues and the dancers get more and more frenzied. And then as what happens in other movements, in the middle of the frenzy, all of a sudden the music freezes. And then we have the clarinet giving us the melody. And the clarinet um, has, plays a prominent role, as you'll hear, especially in these kind of flashbacks. So we have now... So again, time kind of stands still, and then boom, we're off again, and then a, an incredible ending to this movement that the dancer just keeps swirling around, and then we just end in a, an incredible flash of, of, of orchestrational brilliance. Our third dream comes from a scene in the country, and again, one of the interesting things for me about this piece is how close we are to quote-unquote classical music. Beethoven, of course, wrote the Sixth Symphony, his Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, in the key of F major. And every composer knew Beethoven's symphonies. Every composer, including Berlioz, knew Beethoven's symphonies. So it's really no mistake whatsoever that we have our scene in the key of F major. And a lot of the same kind of musical gestures that we hear from Beethoven's symphony come into this hyper-romantic symphony. But again, only written a few years later. Berlioz uses psychology in an incredible way. We have a scene in the country where our, our protagonist goes out and things are beautiful, of course, but very, very lonely in a way. And so Berlioz uses also spatial things. He asks, at the beginning, we have two shepherds. And shepherds, of course, as we all know, play oboe and they play the English horn, um, as they have traditionally throughout music. And so we have an English horn on stage calling to his colleague, way far away. And then somewhere far away, his colleague answers an octave higher. Berlioz uses orchestration like no other composer who had certainly had come up to that time and so the scene is very very stark and we have kind of the, that psychology of having the individual instruments talking back and forth the scene kind of opens up a little bit the orchestra kind of gradually joins and of course this obsessive melody comes back again um, we have the scene our protagonist gets kind of more and more desperate things get a little bit more agitated but then right in the middle we have the flute and the oboe, again, the same instruments who have been, been um, giving us this ide fix, come back to play this melody. And this happens kind of in the middle as, as our protagonist gets more and more, I think, kind of desperate and kind of maybe terror-stricken about being alone and, and, and just being out in the country. All the elements kind of come together. So the orchestra kind of whips, up, whips itself up into a little bit of a frenzy. And then we have the reason why is because of this musical obsession. The same yearning. 
And so underneath all this melody, this Ide fix, we have the orchestra agitating. Again, at the very end, things slow down, things get very, very quiet, and we, and we hear that melody again. One of the great psychological moves that Berlioz does at the very end is the way he portrays loneliness. We have the same call that we had at the beginning from the English horn, but now it goes unanswered. And so what we expect, we expect to hear our oboe or our other shepherd colleagues somewhere else far away, but it doesn't come. And what does come is thunder. And what Berlioz does is great orchestration. He uses four timpani. And the way we will do it in the Quad Cities is spread those timpani throughout the stage. And so he just kind of a, a distant rumble of a distant storm that we hear just rising up and, and really kind of underscoring the, the just loneliness of everything. And so again, here's our, here's our shepherd calling. And instead of the answer, we just have the soft rumble of timpani from far away. And it ends in really the most kind of desperately lonely music that I know in, in all of the repertoire. A really fantastic portrayal of the country, of loneliness, and of just really lovesick desperation. Well, I invite you to join us on October 7th at the Adler Theater and October 8th at Centennial Hall to hear this incredible masterwork.